Hi, this is Donna. Welcome to DD Paper Crafts. Today's video is going to be slightly different in that I'm going to be thinking more about what's outside the box rather than the box itself. I'd seen an idea of a planter on Pinterest and I thought, can I replicate that but have the box within the planter? So let's get started. For what will be the base and two of the sides of the box, I've cut a piece of craft card to 11 inches by 3 inches. And along the 11 inch side, I've scored at 3 and 8. This is going to give me a box which is 5 inches by 3 inches in dimension. For the remaining two sides of the box I've cut two pieces which are six by three and a half and I've scored along the six inch side at half an inch and five and a half inches and along the three and a half inch side at half an inch and for the remaining side of the box which is effectively going to be the flap to open the box I've got a piece which is six inches by four inches and I've scored around all four sides at half an inch. The construction of the box is very simple. I'm going to start by just burnishing all of the score lines. I'm going to start with the base and the side which will actually be a side and two sides as the box comes together and the first thing I'm going to do is Put a notch, a finger notch into one of these sides whilst the piece is still flat. So let's start by putting our box together. Each of the two side panels I'm going to just cut a wedge at the ends within the half inch glue tabs and I'm going to take away the bottom squares like so and then just cut a wedge just to shape our glue tabs. And do that on both pieces. I'm going to use tape for this just because the craft card is obviously a bit more fibrous than normal card and I just find it easier. And you're probably aware of this, but if you take an acrylic block or something with a right angle edge, you could rip the tape off against the corner of the block. And that just makes life easier than using your scissors each time. So let's take our tape off, turn my pieces over and I'm just going to line up my score lines, make sure everything's sitting squarely and push down to burnish. Let's do the same this side. So that's the start of our box. Let's work on one end at a time. Obviously the disadvantage of using tape is you don't get the wiggle room although sometimes depending on the quality of the tape you can peel it back. But I'm just going to line up my edges and then once I'm comfortable push down from the inside and I've got a nice clean right angle. So there we have our box nearly complete. This is going to be my opening of the box. I'm going to cut away the left hand corners and cut a very slight wedge and cut a wedge at the back. Do the same this side. So this end is going to have my hinge because obviously I've cut my notch this end. That's going to sit in like so. I just need to make sure that I've thoroughly burnished this. 
I'm now going to remove the corners at the other end, but I'm going to cut straight up the corners, straight up the score lines, and just remove the score line. So this hinge here is going to be adhered and I flat, I'm just going to test because I might need to cut some away. Make sure that fits in. So I am going to need to cut a slight, trim that slightly, so I'm going to do that now. That fits in really nicely and really snugly now. So I'm going to add my tape to this hinge. So I'm just going to slot that in there, line up the top of the box and the score line, get that sitting squarely and push that into place. Fold the side panels in and if I need to I can adjust a little bit more. I'm just going to straighten this corner up here so that now slots in like so. So now we're ready to create our planter look. I've cut 12 pieces of cardstock which are five inches long and these are three eighths of an inch wide and these are going to sit directly on to the base like so and I've added two pieces of cardstock together so that's how one side is going to look and then I've cut three and a half inch lengths of card added two together and I've put some decorative paper on the outside which has got a wood look to it and I've shaped the top. I cut the paper strip after strip so I've actually numbered the back so that I can get the pattern in the right order. I don't know if you can see here so I've got A1, A2, A3 etc and these are going to sit on the supports with approximately a quarter of an inch gap. So they're going to sit along like so. And I think now having looked at the, this is the first time I've looked at this as I'm putting it together. I think I might prefer to add some of the wood effect to the horizontal bars as well. Let's just see what that looks like. These are not in the right order, I can tell that. Yes, I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add some strips onto these outside pieces as well. I've now added my paper, my wood grain onto the what's going to be the horizontal strips and I've just marked a T on this piece here. That's the top so that's going to have the flowers on it because this is where the panel is going to open. So let's just flip that across. I'm going to have a think about the placement of the cross of the horizontal bars and then I will make sure that they're lined up all the way around. I'm going to use my tape again and add my tape to the back of the strips that's good so let's just make sure that that opens nicely which it does not interfering with anything let's work our way around I'm going to line up the next lot of strips so that they're in line with these
I'm going to stick this middle bar on, but I appreciate that it's running across the finger notch. I haven't put the tape right up to the end. I've only put it where the finger notch, this section here. I'm going to stick it on and then I will judge whether I need to actually shape this particular piece to fit with the finger notch or if you can actually still use the finger notch. So I'll stick this on here and it might be that what I do is I, at the moment you can actually get in there so it's not a problem, but obviously I've got my strut to go on. So it might be that I do something here to indicate that you need to get in. At the moment, it's not particularly obvious that you need to open the box, although you can get your finger behind. I think what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to shape. So let's open the, open the box up. And I'm just gonna go in with my scissors and snip through just to shape that. So I should have considered that, which obviously I didn't. So that goes up to there and at the moment you can still get in that finger notch. So that's good. So now I need to put my struts in order and I'm now going to use my glue and I'm going to add these on and I'm not going to measure the gaps I am not worried about it being within the nth degree of space and so they will fit it might be that I reduce it to four from the five. See, I think that looks nice. So I'm going to stay with the five and put my strut back in place. And I will obviously want to make sure that it doesn't come over the bottom of the box. Five or four, let's remove this one and spread them out. Now it's getting difficult. Now comes the difficult part. Do we want five? Do we want four? I think four actually looks better. I'm sure some will disagree, but I think four. Absolutely, I'm going to go with four. So we'll have six along the next side. So let's get my pieces in order. Stand it up and make sure that it sits. That's looking good. I'm going to do the door section next because I need to consider how I'm going to do this piece at the side where it opens. So this is an example of where I've just gone merrily along without actually thinking the process through. So I'm going to Put my pieces in order and what I need to give consideration to is that you can still use the finger pole. So we'll start at this end and just think about how this is going to come together. That's okay, I think if I have them like that you've still got space and it doesn't look too bad so I'm going to offset the first one slightly further away from the edge than I have any of the others. So I'm going to let that dry and then I'm going to add my flowers to the top 
to finish the planter look and then I'll come back and show you the final piece. I've now added my flowers on the top. This is how the planter looks. On all four sides and it does open at the side. You can get your finger in and it does open at the side like so. If I was putting something heavy in here I would add another base on the inside and I would adhere it with construction glue because the craft card is a little bit flimsy. The sides are obviously stronger now because they've got those extra pieces of card but I would add something to the base. I hope you've enjoyed today's video which is concentrated on turning what's a simple box construction into something which just looks absolutely lovely. If you've enjoyed the video and haven't done so already, please consider subscribing to the channel. And until next time, thanks for watching.